it's funny because in a way you would think big tech has a big lead, but actually when you analyze step by step, you see, well, wait a minute, actually everything they do will be replicated within six months in the open source world. And also they're hitting brick walls that they need to work around by integrating neural with symbolic AI. And they're not good at symbolic AI because they haven't built those, those teams. Right. So their, their, their positions are not as, ironclad as you would think and and they know this very well although the although the the average average uh, outside observers don't don't know it so I, I think we're entering into a super interesting time and we can then cross correlate this with all the socioeconomic implication stuff that 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 we talked about in our in our in our our last discussion which i i thought about a bit on a recent trip to to Brazil because uh, I was at the Web Summit Brazil. It was great. I'm I'm a I was born in Brazil. I'm a dual citizen U U S and U S and Brazil. So there's a some connection there. I'd thought a lot before about what all this means for sub-Saharan Africa because we have an office in Ethiopia. I've done a lot of work there. Brazil is in a different case, right? It's not that poor, but it's not rich enough to give universal basic income. To, to every citizen. So we thinking through what all this means for each different sort of socioeconomic stratum on the, on the globe remains, remains quite complicated. And really the difference there from when we last talked is now every fucking country is thinking about this, right? Like uh, the leader of Brazil is thinking about this. I mean, uh, even people who have no knowledge of tech and no interest in tech know they have to be thinking about it. And that doesn't mean they'll think about it productively or intelligently or come to the right conclusion, but it's interesting, like how much that's out there. We met loads of Brazilian parliament members at web summit Rio and all, all they're thinking is like, what do we do to deal with the on rush of AI? And so what do you tell them, Ben? Uh, I tell them, I tell them you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, what I told them is, first of all, what we just discussed, that I think decentralized approaches to AGI have more chance than it would naively seem at first. And that's very good for the developing world because it means that Brazil really can own their fair share of the emerging the emerging global AI network, right? And it doesn't have to be something owned by US or China and Brazil just uses it or is or is used by it, right? If it's deployed in a decentralized way and owned in a decentralized way and developed in an open way, Brazil has brilliant computer scientists and very active entrepreneurial ecosystem, like they can contribute. There's a huge dam on the, on the border of Brazil and Paraguay generating massive amounts of electricity. We've actually been talking to the government on the Paraguay side about building a huge data center there, running a bunch of machines powered by HyperCycle, NuNet, SingularityNet, running AI servers, running Zarka and true AGI processes, right? So, I mean, they've got electricity there. They have computer science knowledge there. Like, they can... They can own part of this too, and 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 they should, and then and then they will have a a practical vote, right? Because when when I say this is going to be democratic, I don't really mean it's going to be like everyone in the world goes and and votes in a poll, like what does the AI think next? I mean, you you might have some DAOs and some voting. We're we're translate transforming Singular Net Foundation into a DAO with more explicit voting and governance, but much of the democracy here is of a more loose and self-organized kind. Like if you have big server farms in Brazil and Paraguay that are that are running gigawatts of, of electricity to power nodes powering the global AGI brain, I mean then then in effect Brazil and Paraguay have a big vote, right? It's running on their soil. It's their own developers con- con- contributing to it, right? So the, obviously obviously they like they like the they like this part of the story. I think the tokenomic bit they're open to but but uh crypto is still a little more dubious in in in, in brazil right but because and they, they like to control money flow of, of, of real and so forth so because I, I think another piece of this is once you have agi rolled out on a decentralized platform then you have a beautiful context for 
tokenomic incentivization mechanisms to be used to pay people who contribute. That doesn't fully solve the economic issues involved, but it at least gives more of a global level playing field, right? So the people who fundamentally have the knowledge to contribute to the economy can do it without without being screwed up by you know arbitrary national boundaries and conventional corporate corporate structures and and so forth and brazilian law places many weird obstacles in 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 in, in the way of a shift to sort of a global sort of tokenomically incentivized economy how quickly they can adapt that to who who knows? So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We the people can no longer be fooled. 
We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.